two. Welcome. Tonight's presentation is Getting the Edge on Removables, presented by Dennis Urban, CDT. Dennis is a general manager here at DSG and one of our technical advisors. He is an internationally recognized speaker as well as internationally published author. Um, Dennis, we thank you very much for taking time out of your evening this evening to bring us education and enlightenment on removables. Take it away. Well, thank you, Jessica. I appreciate it. And uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you for taking the time to join us on our webinar. You know, as a certified dental technician with over 40 years of removable experience, I am thrilled to share some exciting news on the technical advances in denture technology. Uh, tonight, we're going to have an overview on both printed and mill technology on digital dentures. We'll also go through some important aspects of analog denture procedures and how they correlate to the digital side of technology. So let's get started. So here's the outline of the presentation. We'll talk about denture technology, looking back and moving forward, occlusal record taking for digital and analog full dentures, the reduction of chair time and adjustments on removables, digital versus analog full denture techniques, occlusal schemes, including lingualized occlusion and centric occlusion, case design with milling and printing techniques, patient acceptance, communication with the dental laboratory, and again, this has been uh, this is an exciting topic. Topic I have a lot of information, uh, but it's been a, a challenge for a lot of people to get into digital uh, dentures because the materials, especially on the printing side, haven't been there. Uh, really, uh, the quality hasn't been there uh, until about a year now. Um, and we, we're going to talk about the digital side uh, with printing and with milling. So let's look at a removable technology. Looking back, as we see on the uh, top right-hand part of the screen, those are George Washington's dentures, long time ago made of, out of lead and whalebone. And on the lower, you'll see a denture material that uh, we haven't seen in a long time, uh, many, many years ago, is a material called vulcanite. But we've come so far from these materials. You know, we moved forward with many different materials on the market, in the, and for years, we weren't really moving forward on a removable uh, side of technology. We saw a lot on the crown of bridge technology, on the implant side of technology, uh, but not the removable. And now we're really moving fast when it comes to removables. So we've come a long way. You know, we have highly aesthetic denture teeth and unsurpassed denture-based materials now. As you can see right here, these are highly aesthetic dentures. You know that patients don't want, want to look like they're wearing dentures. They want the teeth to look natural. And uh, we can match the existing gingiva on a patient. With denture-based staining, this is a high-end denture with uh, denture-based stain and high-end denture teeth. And we can do denture-based staining in pretty much any aspect just to, to match that specific gingiva, uh, gingiva on the patient. We can mimic the anatomy on wax uh, and utilizing artistry and various shaded waxes. This is one of my uh, waxed up uh, denture triangles here. As you can see, it's very characterized. You know, we have, uh, we have so many different options now with uh, these, these types of materials. And um, here's another picture of a full upper and full lower setup. And now we can print and mill accurate aesthetic dentures with amazing fit, form, and function. And we'll, we'll go over that tonight. But where are we going in denture technology? Well, the United States Dental Laboratories is seeing a dramatic increase in full denture cases, implant dentures, and partial dentures. And this number is changing all the time. It keeps on uh, getting larger and larger. You know, not only with full denture cases, but replacement cases, uh, dentures, implant over dentures, and hybrid type cases and partial dentures, uh, cosmetic type parcels that are metal free. There are more in income opportunities for dentists, dental laboratories, and dental material manufacturers. And more people need dentures now than ever before. The industry predicts tremendous growth now through 2050. Experienced denture technicians are the guides for dentists and patient success in denture prosthesis. This is a quote from Dr. Stephen Wagner, who is a prosthodontist. And Dr. Christian Coachman stated at the Seattle Study Group, group meeting a few, a few months ago that professionals who understand dentures are the ones who understand smile design. And I have to agree with him because you really have to know occlusion. We have to fill an inter-occlusal space of 40 millimeters or more uh, with denture teeth. And we have to capture anatomical landmarks and go according to what we need to know from the information that's given to, given to us by the clinician. And we have to move in, move in the right direction with digital and analog. We have to apply the sciences that were learned in analog over to the digital side. And that includes communication, very important communication and planning these cases. 
We need to utilize the same fundamental prosthodontic processes to make a digital denture as we always have. The clinician still needs to communicate, provide the technician with the necessary information for a functional case. Digital denture technology is still evolving and improving at a rapid pace. And the basic knowledge of prosthodontic principles, inclu including providing accurate impressions, is even more important in the digital world because many of the details can be seen on a large screen, which cannot otherwise be detected. And we'll see some of these photos later on as we go through the presentation. Dentists still need to understand the importance of capturing accurate axillary mandibular records, vertical dimension, and centric relation. And the technicians still need to con continue to analyze ridge relationships and then select appropriate anterior and posterior teeth for the desired occlusal scheme. We want to create a more personal service, build an intelligent design platform on digital dentures, reinvent productivity and business processes, engage your patients and empower your employees and opt optimize your operations. And all this can be done with the new digital technology. Well, let's start talking about uh, best practices for full dentures. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, we need that communication between the, uh, the clinician, the laboratory and the dental technician. Many times we have all these communication tools at our fingertips and still they can, can't uh, effectively uh, plan a case uh, successfully. So we have to depend on you, the clinician, on your clinical knowledge and training, the assessment of the patient, appropriate treatment planning, detailed RX work on the R RX work on the authorization form. We need to see that. And the digital photography is pretty much needed on every case and quality materials is a must. And the communication, communication from us to certified dental technicians, you depend on our technical expertise and knowledge and procedures and materials. The appropriate feedback to you on, on the dentist, to the clinician on impressions, bites, and shade, and case planning with you, the clinician. We like to get digital photography and, of course, use quality materials. <clears throat> so some of the problems that uh, have all been faced with full dentures have, have been compromised stability, poor neuromuscular coordination, especially with occlusion, a low tolerance on mucosal tissue for a removable acrylic base, especially on lower dentures, and the patient desire for more stability and comfort. You know, and, and the comfort level of the dentist is compromised due to the excessive chair time. You know, it's compromised because of the ill-fitting dentures uh, with adjustments on occlusion, sore spots. And so this takes up a lot of uh, you know, financial uh, excess in, in, the, in the operatory. And uh, so over the years, it's been um, kind of a compromised feeling with a lot of clinicians when doing full dentures. The goals of the final outcome, we want to create natural aesthetics. We want to enhance facial appearance compensate for lost soft tissue, enhance the function with the right occlusal scheme. And we'll speak about uh, occlusal schemes in a little while when we talk about centric occlusion and lingualized occlusion. We want to create a denture with longevity, impact resistance, and bacteria resistance, and the elimination and reduction of adjustments on occlusion and sore spots. Some of the common mistakes in fabricating a full denture have been, have been full poor treatment planning with communication, distorted final impressions, inaccurate master models, Insufficient occlusal records and poor choice of materials. I say the two top phone calls I, I make uh, to, uh, to, to, to clinicians are on uh, distorted impressions and, and insufficient occlusal records. So we want to make sure we get those accurate impressions and occlusal records. So let's go over the clinical protocol on removables. Of course, the first visit is a preliminary, preliminary impression. Second visit is custom tray final impression. Third visit, a by registration. Fourth visit, the visit is tooth setup and a wax try-in. And of course, the fifth visit is a final insertion. And we can eliminate one visit if a functional impression is taken inside the base plate of the occlusal rim at the second visit. Or we can, we can possibly use the existing denture of the patient that the patient has. So, uh, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes. For some of the best practices with filled dentures, you know, if we get a good preliminary impression, more than likely we're gonna get a good custom tray and get a, get a good final impression. So you want to utilize a stock tray and take an impression with quality material, make sure all the anatomical landmarks are captured. And the second visit of uh, us at, we'll, at the laboratory, we'll send you a custom tray impression, which is a little short of the periphery, so you can border mold this, the impressions. Uh, we want to make sure all the borders and anatomical landmarks are captured, including retromolar pads, hamulin notches, and the frenum. And the third visit, this is very important. You know, I have a, a, I, when I lecture, I talk a lot about occlusal rims and the information we need from the clinician at the laboratory that makes a, a successful case. So when you're taking the bite registration, make sure that patient is in an upright position so they can get in that physiological rest position. Place that contoured occlusal rim in the, and base plate in the mouth and make sure there's no interference with the wax. 
and we try to get you the uh, a perfectly contoured occlusal rim uh, sent to you at the at the operatory, but sometimes you have to adjust it. And if we can get the midline, the cuspid lines, the high lip, high lip line, and everything we need for a, a good, accurate denture setup, that, that, was, that was very important. And not only on the analog side, but also on the digital side. And these are some a review of some of the upper wax rim dimensions. You may already, already know the upper anterior wax rim of the height from the, the periphery to the incisal edges on an average of 22 millimeters and the occlusal width at eight to 10 millimeters. Dennis, that brings us to our first polling question, which is when prescribing full dentures, do you provide the laboratory with all necessary markings on a contoured oh. occlusal rim? Do you down. When prescribing full dentures, do you provide the laboratory with all necessary markings on a contoured occlusal rim? And a couple more seconds. When prescribing full dentures, do you provide the laboratory with all necessary markings on a contoured occlusal rim? We've got over 50% uh, participation. And it looks like over one, a little 62% said oh. yes. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for participating in that. Uh, and that's good to know because, you know, uh, with the um, information that we get uh, on these occlusal rims, it's really going to uh, make for a successful case. You know, and continuing with this on a, on a lower wax rim dimensions uh, from the periphery to the, uh, using an average to the inside of the ledge is about 18 millimeters. And of course, the occlusal width is 8 to 10. I like to mention these things. You know, I, I, get, I get back the basics a lot on, my, on, my, on the on lectures I do and my seminars because it's a reminder of what we need to do for a successful case. So I'm just going to uh, screen froze up here. Let me just see if we can advance here. <laughs> Bear with me a second. Technical difficulties. There we go. So at the end, again, reviewing the necessary information that we need is midline, canine lines, high lip line, a smile line, and the approved occlusal plane. And we mentioned earlier about eliminating one appointment. You know, if we take a wash impression and, and, and a bite registration with the existing dentures, we can eliminate that, that one appointment. And many times we can, uh, you know, afford a lab model at the, uh, in the dental office or articulate it in the dental office, or, or you can even send it to the laboratory. We can have those dentures back to you in the same day. But another uh, method for eliminating an appointment is a functional impression in the bite registration. And this is what we'll talk more about when we talk about our digital dentures. And this is just, uh, you're doing the same thing as a, with a functional impression, border molding, taking a nice impression uh, and capturing all the anatomical landmarks and also taking, uh, getting a bite registration and occlusal, uh, all the occlusal information at that, that, uh, that one appointment. And the fourth visit is your uh, tooth setup with a wax try-in. And as you see here, this, you know, these are all anatomical uh, wax ups and characterized wax ups and uh, they look great and natural, looks like the finished denture. And you know, dentists and patients love to see this, you know, and you'll see it's gonna be a little bit different on the digital side when we talk about printed triants. And the fifth visit is your uh, final insertion. You know, so the check for fit form and function, you check for pressure spots, equilibrate the occlusion, and then you're all set. But many times this takes a little bit, bit of time, you know, if it's not made correctly and the information wasn't, uh, wasn't there from the beginning and we're not using the correct techniques. Getting to the traditional denture workflow in the laboratory, uh, the first step, we're going to pour our models, uh, make a cups and tray, pour our final impressions, make an occlusal rim, articulate, set up the denture teeth and wax, and process and finish. Now, when we get to the printed side of denture, uh, dent of denture workflow, it's a little bit different. Everything's the same, but that third step. On that third step, what we're going to do is scan the final impression or the model, plus we're going to scan the bite registration, design the case, and then print it for a try-in and send you the printed try-in. So instead of getting this for a, uh, for a wax try-in with a tooth setup or a wax try-in, you're going to get some, getting something like this in the dental office. So it's kind of a monolithic looking try-in, and we'll talk about characterizing these later on to make a little look a little more natural. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. But these print, printed try-ins fit fantastic. It gives you the idea of the aesthetics and, and function and, and the occlusion, uh, just as you would with a regular traditional uh, try-in. And the workflow comparison on the clinical side, everything's pretty much the same except for that fourth visit when we're doing our uh, printed try-in. Again, here's our print, printed try-in. 
And, you know, you, pe people ask me all the time, I mean, every time I'm doing my seminar, what about intraoral scanning on full arch cases? Well, there's still a challenge with this, capturing all the anatomical, anatomical landmarks are, are for, with a fully edentulous intraoral scanning. You know, scanning is possible, but it's still not perfect. Additional steps must be taken and case selection is critical. You can, use, you can use an indelible pencil to help with stitching issues when scanning a particular arch where, where there's few, few landmarks for reference. Indelible pencils will help. And cases with tissue, tissue texture and landmarks will be easy to scan well, and we must make sure to capture all these anatomical landmarks. There's an article out by uh, Professor uh, LaRusso, and it's very interesting because he's been very successful, uh, Dr. LaRusso, in scanning intra uh, intraorally with the, um, fully edentulous cases. <clears throat> so his article was designed for optimal scan experiences for edentulous patient, patients using 3Shape or Trios, and this is uh, sponsored by 3Shape. And as you can see here, let me see if I can, I can highlight this. Look at the direction the doctor is scanning on the upper, from one hamerial notch to the other hamerial notch, going all across the periphery. And then he comes inside a palatal area and captures all those anatomical landmarks. And he's been very successful. And even on a lower, you can see how everything was scanned on the lower. He goes in the, in the, in the direction where he captures everything he needs to capture, capture, and he's been very successful with that. So some people are successful. The cases I've seen with, uh, with digital, uh, with intraoral scanning, um, fully edentulous cases have not been that accurate. You know, I think, I think we're getting there. Uh, it's just going to, it's probably going to be shortly, but we're getting there, you know. Uh, <clears throat> one, things, one of the things we do get is a lot of intraoral scanning on immediate cases. And these seem to work out well because, you know, at the time of extraction, many times the, the denture is relined or softlined uh, in the, in the, uh, the time of extraction. Let me go to our next slide here. Sorry, it froze up on me again here. Bear with me a second. Yeah. Here we go. Right, this should work now. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Gonna, the uh, computer's freezing up on me a little bit here. But uh, there's another article from the Journal of Prostodontic, Prostodontic Research that was published just in February. It was an in vivo feasibility, feasibility study on computerized optical impression taking of edentulous jaws on 29 patients. And the conclusion from this study, they had, uh, which, there were many limitations on, uh, with the study, and the scanners were not able to accurately uh, fully replace a conventional impression for the fabrication of a complete denture. So in other words, they weren't accurate enough to, uh, to fabricate a denture. And this is the direction that this doctor was scanning in. He's, he's, he's totally different than Dr. LaRusso's uh, uh, scans. So let's move on now. We're going to start getting into the heart of the, uh, uh, the seminar here. But first of all, I want to talk about analog denture setups and the traditional setups. You know, we talked about earlier about getting all the information we need when we do uh, a full upper and full lower setup. And, you know, it's very time consuming. You really have to know the science behind what you're doing. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we have to fill that intro all space, uh, intro occlusal space rather, and, um, and with denture teeth. And sometimes it's a challenge if we don't have all the information we need. So this particular photos we're mounting on a fully adjustable articulator, making sure the occlusal plane is correct. I put a rubber band on a sizal pin all the way to the posterior of the, of the uh, articulator, maintaining my uh, camper's plane and my occlusal plane. I get everything set up correctly. In this particular case, the lower teeth was set first. You know, when I do a denture setup, I'm not setting my denture teeth, I set upper, denture, upper anteriors, then my lower anteriors. <clears throat> And then I set my upper posteriors and my lower posteriors. And then I have my, and then I balance it and I check for, uh, you know, any interference. So as you see, it's a lot of work. Every tooth has to be set individually. We have to make it look realistic and natural looking. And then we have to contour it for a wax try-in. So how do we select the anterior teeth? Well, facial form equals uh, tooth form. And we're going to break apart this, uh, this face here and just uh, you know, split it down the middle here with the midline, as you can see here. And we see the, uh, uh, the pupil, uh, pupil line, which is the occlusal plane. Uh, we have the midline, and we'll have a cusp cuspid lines here. So all this information was given to us earlier on, on the uh, occlusal rim. So it's important. And 
facial features equal to, to features. So uh, if we look at the shape of a face, it's usually the shape of the central. So we have to determine the mold by the shape of the arch or the study model. And when I say the shape of the arch, if you look at an upper model and the shape of an upper model, you'll see it's a shape of a central. It could be a tapering uh, arch, a tapering ovoid, a square, square tapering. So all the years I've been picking out denture teeth, I really go by the shape of the upper arch. And we have to uh, determine the width of the six anteriors at times by measuring cuspid to cuspid on the uh, occlusal rim. And then we go to the tooth chart and we, it gives us guidelines to pick out those anterior and posterior teeth. Our concerns are the width of the six anteriors, the shape, the shape of the centrals, and of course the shade. And as I mentioned earlier, tooth forms equal facial forms. We have a square face here, a square tapering, an ovoid face, and then uh, the, tooth that, the teeth that correspond with it. Again, these are old, old photos, but I'd like to show them just to get the point across that usually tooth, uh, face, face form equals tooth form. And the tips of the canines are usually equal to the width of the nose, and the width of the centrals are equal to the width of the filtrum in many instances. We want to set our denture teeth to replicate nature in a harmonious aesthetic effect. But we also want to use the correct denture teeth. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the makeup of the denture teeth that we're using on digital dentures in a little while. But we want a denture tooth that's going to be homogenous material throughout the entire tooth, high mechanical strength, one that's tissue friendly, plaque resistant, color stable, and it has chip free grinding. And the reason why I put chip free uh, grinding in there is because many of the denture teeth on the market, when you grind it, you get to a softer layer on the tooth and it wears out faster than it, than it would if you had a nice homogenous tooth. We want it the same size as natural tooth, we want high, high, uh, high wear resistance. And I like lingual anatomy on the anterior for better, better phonetics. And I'll show you why. If you look at these anterior teeth on the lingual, you see this, uh, this lingual anatomy, and we have a root guy in the palate. Many new patient, may, uh, many new patient where, uh, denture patient where, where is, uh, they have um, a problem with lisping and their tongue sliding off the lingual in the teeth. So when they're wearing that new denture, it's a problem. This helps eliminate that, that problem. And of course, we want a wide occlusal surface that aids in chewing and swallowing. I'm just going to briefly go over setting up the anteriors and posteriors, and then uh, we'll get to the, uh, the visual part of the, uh, of the presentation. The anteriors are positioned individually and parallel to the pupil line, and the lower incisal edges are parallel to the upper incisal edges, as you can see here. And we said it after we, yes. Oh, so sorry, we came to our next polling question. Sure. Um, do you provide the laboratory with a specific brand and mold of denture teeth for full dentures? We are curious if you provide the laboratory with a specific brand and mold of denture teeth for full dentures. And we're about 40%, couple more, that would be wonderful. Do you provide the laboratory with a specific brand and mold of denture teeth for full dentures? And we have ended poll and share the results and 40% say no. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's fine. You know, we, we, you know, one of the most difficult things when I'm, I'm lecturing across the country to different laboratories and technicians, one of the most diffi difficult things they find is picking out uh, uh, denture teeth. But once you apply some of the things I've, I've, I've stated, um, we, it, it works, you know, those, those guidelines that I, I talked about earlier, they work, you know, so, and many times we'll get the, um, the mold and, and, uh, that we need from the clinician. Uh, they might have a, a living mold guide in the office. I'll give us the exact denture teeth that we need and it makes life a little bit easier, but it's no, no big deal. We can do that at the laboratory. But yeah, thank you for your feedback on that. And the guidelines for selecting posterior teeth, we want to pick out the type of occlusal scheme, we want to defer, determine the degree of the tooth, uh, measurements following the mold chart if possible. And they look at the 72% of laboratories use semi-anatomical and anatomical teeth. I'm not a big fan of zero degree or five degree teeth because uh, we were meant to tear and chew our food and not chew uh, like a cow. We want to make sure we grind our teeth, our, our, our food the correct way. And then on a lingual size aspect, we'll, we'll get to in a minute, uh, that is util, util, usually utilized on uh, the implant cases that we do, you know, for lingualized occlusion. And we do use it on uh, full cases also, and I'll elaborate on that in a few minutes. And there's just different occlusal schemes. So we have a bunch to choose from. And different degrees of teeth. Typically, the smaller the ridge, the less degree of the tooth. And the greater the ridge, the ridge, the greater the degree of the tooth. In other words, the greater the cuspal inclination of the tooth. So we're going to select a correct mold now. And we're going to align the occlusal surfaces towards the center of the cranium. 
and this is going to be our curve of Wilson. And we have our curve of spin, our curve of Wilson. And you see, if you see on the right-hand side here, uh, we don't have a curve of Wilson. The occlusal surfaces are not aligned to the center of the cranium. And the reason why I'll do, the only time I'll do that is when I'm setting lingualized occlusion. Because I want that lingual cusp of the upper going right into the central fossa of the lower, and it's going to relieve any off-axis stress on the implant and also reduce any ridge absorption on, on the ridge. So uh, it's, it really works out well with lingualized occlusion. And a lot of patients find that more comfortable. We want the axial inclination of the posteriors to be towards the center of the cranium, as you can see here. And so let's check our setting of posterior teeth. So we want to make sure the central thoughts of the teeth are on, on, the, on the ridge, on the lower. We want to check our vertical inclination, our curve of Spee, and our curve of Wilson. And just to check it real quick, this is our curve of Wilson from the buccal to the lingual, and curve of speed from the anterior to the posterior. We want to set up our occlusal height at the, uh, at the bite registration at times. If the doctor wants us to follow that bite registration, they spent a lot of time, he or she spent a lot of time giving us that information, we'll follow that uh, bite registration. We want harmonious transition to the posteriors and an individualized anterior setup. I'm going to talk, touch a little bit now on, on the uh, lingualized occlusion aspect of it. And basically what we're doing here, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that lingual cusp of the upper is touching, it's going right into the central fossa of the lower. And years ago, we had to use separate teeth. We had to use a higher degree of tooth on the upper and a, and a lower degree of tooth on the lower. But now we have specialized teeth with lingualized occlusion from many different companies out there. And to fill the filled denture patient, and uh, it's a reduction of, force, of the forces, which are transferred to the denture rest area during the mastication and the underlying bone structure and oral mucosa. And this will reduce sore spots and the resorption of tissue. And on implants supported over dentures is a reduction of the lateral side to side forces of the implant because lateral forces could cause the implant to fail. And the buccal cusp uh, are pushed out towards the cheek so that you can avoid cheek biting. And there's the final setup with the, the uh, characterized wax up. So that's, I just wanted to give you just a little review on analog uh, setups and, and function and, and, and uh, workflow. And now we're gonna talk about fabricating a print, printed denture. So here's some of the steps. We're gonna talk about digitation, case design, the printed try-in, and the printed final denture. So the first thing we're gonna do in this particular case, we're gonna talk about uh, the three shape order. And we'll be talking a little bit about the, uh, on, on the printed side, uh, on the dense ply, the Lucitone printed denture. So we want to enter all the information we need to do on the, on the three shape order, patient's name, what type of materials, and so forth. And then we're going to scan the model or scan the final impression. And if you remember before, I was talking about the detail that we see now on the screen on, on, these, on these scans. You go on the left hand side here, look up, we, they, the scans pick up so much information that we couldn't really see it otherwise. Uh, and uh, so you can either scan the model or the final impression. I would say most of the time we're scanning models for these cases. And then we have to scan the bites. In this particular uh, photo here, uh, this technician uh, set this up on a hinge articulator, but as you can see, we had to put some um, little uh, holes in the, in, the, um, in the model here just to align it correctly in the, uh, in the three, three shape scanner, uh, because um, a failure to do this can result in poor alignment and incorrect bite uh, uh, registration on the printed try -in. But I don't utilize this method. I, what I do is I'll, I'll set, uh, set these models up on a fully adjustable articulator or semi-adjustable articulator, and it's a magnetic type articulator. I'll put this uh, in the three shape, I'll spray it with some scan spray, and the three shape scan will pick up all the information I need with midline, custom lines, by registration, and all that will be put into the software. And the articulation with these, uh, this three shape software, you know, the virtual articulator, it allows for centric and lateral excursions at saving the densest valuable chair time on adjustments. And this is articulation with centric and lateral adjustments. As you see, this is an upper denture going against natural dentition. So this is done automatically for us in the, in the software. And on digital denture setups, the digital articulations, the impressions are digitally articulated to the bite registration using special software. And denture teeth are placed following the arc shape and the bite registration. And the vertical height can be adjusted in the software to open or close the bite if necessary. And we can also do full arch setups on full upper and full lower uh, setups. Full arch setups instead of spending a lot of time individually setting teeth uh, the analog way. And the software proposal is reasonable and can be modified using the software tools. 
And every aspect of the digital wax up can be adjusted also. We talked about uh, uh, characterized wax ups before, you know, and uh, making all those uh, different uh, uh, carvings and, and anatomy. And we can do that also with the, on the digital side too. And after we have a completed denture design, our case design, then we're ready to print our uh, denture try-in. So um, with the dense ply material, the Lucitone uh, digital material, the printed material, it comes in various shades from A A1 to uh, A2, A3, B1, B2, and BL3. And um, if any adjustments have to be made, it can be made, for instance, the midline's off, you can uh, get a Sharpie and draw the mid correct midline on the printed denture. You can grind down the posteriors and take a new bite, and then you can take a wash impression inside if there are fit issues. And when this comes back to us at the laboratory, we can rescan this, and then this information will merge with the original case, and we can either print a new try-in for you, or we can go to a finish and print the, print the final denture. But how can we make a printed try-in look a little more natural? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do this, and we do this in the laboratory. We can, we can take the time to put denture-based stain onto this uh, printed try-in, monolithic printed try-in. It takes a lot of time. It may look, look nice. We can do this if you want. But what I recommend is using aesthetically colored wax, just like I did on, on the, um, the uh, analog-type wax-ups. So we want to you know, so look a lot, lot more natural for the patient when the patient sees it. And it's something that you have to get used to with these printed try-ins, but they really work out nicely. So we, use, we apply this aesthetically colored wax. I, I, I apply molten wax around the contoured uh, printed try-in, and it really works out nicely. And it's a lot better than sending a monolithic uh, uh, type of uh, printed try-in. So if everything works out nicely, we're ready to go. We, have, we can print the final denture. This is the Lucitone material, as you can see here. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So we already scanned and designed the case. Now we're ready to print. We send the information to the printer. And after we, after we print it, we have to wash and recycle the case. I'll get into more into that in a minute. Uh, we're going to fuse and cure actual denture teeth into these bases. And then we're going to finish and polish the denture. So the printed denture base material is phenomenal. You know, I mentioned earlier, a year ago, a year and a half ago uh, uh, with printed materials, uh, I wasn't happy at all. You couldn't sell me on a printed denture. I mean, it was just, uh, there was a lot of bacteria buildup. There was no flexural strength, no impact resistance, and uh, it just wasn't good for the patient. And now we have this great material out, uh, and it comes in various shades, natural and natural looking, from original shades all the way up to dark reddish pink. We have five different shades, and uh, it looks a lot more natural. So we set up the printer, we pour the material into the printer, and once we print our dentures, we, as you can see here, we have the uh, supports on these dentures holding it in, in the printer. So we have to remove those supports here without taking away the supports on a lingual, like you see here. Uh, the reason why is these, these um, dentures are not fully cured yet. So what we're, taking, we're taking them out of the, uh, um, uh, the printer, we're removing the, materi the material, then we have to wash it with denatured alcohol, make sure it's nice and clean, but then ultrasonic, then we blow it off, and then we're ready to fuse our denture teeth into the, uh, into the denture base. So let's talk a little bit about the denture assembly. You know, we're actually using IPN 3D digital denture teeth. And I, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the IPN denture tooth line from Densply. Very, very nice teeth. They're highly functional. They're, they're wear resistant. And they design these teeth uh, with a smaller ridge lap. So it'll be easier for, for, to and incorporate them into, into the denture base. But in our next slide, you'll see, you'll notice a complex chart. But the great thing in three shape is that the characterization points are set to indicate the position of the retromolar pads, the canine points, the ridge points, and it's coupled with the use of pounds triangle. Yeah, I'm so sorry for calling so late. I'll be really quick. I got a question in the chat box. Oh yeah, sure. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Dennis. Oh, okay. Got to continue. And then you have the canine points and ridge points are coupled with the use of pounds triangle and allowing us the software to pick out the denture teeth. And so there's no guesswork in picking out the correct mold. So there's your articulation key, and all that information is in the software. So it, it takes into consideration the bite registration, the shape of the arch, the impression that was taken, and it tells us what denture teeth to use. So it's really neat the way this is done, and it saves us a lot of trouble. And there's a lot of different mold choices we can choose from. So at this point, we're ready to fuse these denture teeth into the denture base. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, condition the teeth. We use a material called the Fuse One material, and it actually gets the teeth ready to bond and, and actually fuse to that denture base. 
we're conditioning this teeth, these teeth on a, on, a, on a warming tray. And then we're going to insert these into the actual sockets that were, that were printed for us in the denture base, and it's an exact fit. So we put this fused tube material, we fuse these denture teeth in, we push them in, into the sockets, and then we light cure it for a few seconds. And remember, this is not totally cured yet, you know, and if, if there's any gaps or any spaces there, there's another material called a fuse three material. We'll just go around the cervical every, every tooth to make sure everything looks nicely, uh, nice and uh, we fill in all the voids. At this point, we're ready to post cure it and put it in the post curing unit. And this is for about probably about 25, 27 minutes. And once it comes out, we remove the, um, uh, the strengtheners. As you can see here, we, we use a disc. We grind off the rough spots there and then we polish. So pretty much the denture is pretty much finished for us because we did all the contouring in the software. So there's not much work for us to do at all. And there's your finished denture. Nice aesthetically pleasing denture with IPN denture teeth. And there's the overview of the process here. So you know, about two hours for up to eight denture, ba eight bases there and about 80 minutes worth of labor time. Uh, and you have a nice functional aesthetic and uh, long lasting denture. And Let's look at some of the features and benefits of the Lucidome print indentures. You know, so on the analog, we talked about some of the, uh, the aspects of uh, the uh, uh, negatives of the analog dentures, excess of chair time, adjustments, inconsistency with occlusion, patient acceptance was a problem, and many cl clinicians' comfort level was at minimum. But now we have reduced chair time, little to no adjustments, digital pre-occlusion uh, reduces occlusal adjustments, better patient acceptance, and peace of mind with the final denture outcome. And this is one of the best features, I think, is this digital file is always available for duplicate or replacement dentures. So if the patient comes in and says, you know, doctor, I lost my denture, I dropped it, uh, something happened to it, my dog ate it, whatever, uh, we can, you call us up, we have the file at the laboratory, we can print another denture in no time. And another big advantage, and this is something I, one of the best features I also love about this, this material also, it's called the BAM factor. It's body activated material. When a denture is placed, in the mouth, the strength of the material increases from 1,500 joules per square meter to 3,100 joules per square meter. And what does that mean? It doubles the resistance to breakage. So as the patient is wearing these dentures, they actually get stronger. So that's pretty amazing how uh, you know, this material uh, is, is developed. And also now, it's gonna to touch on this. This is a whole other uh, seminar, but now we're doing using printed technology for hybrid transitionals. So all, those, all that time spent chair side with conversions and things like that, now we can utilize that the information in the printer to save you time chair side, where all these access holes are drilled out for the, those temporary cylinders can go right in there. Everything's perfect and you can cure these temporary cylinders into the, uh, the access holes and you eliminate a lot of time with these hybrid transitionals. But we'll talk about that at another webinar. So we covered the aspects of the, um, the digital printed denture with Densply. So let's move on to the Pro FX mill denture. We call it, we call it the Pro FX mill denture at, uh, at Dental Services Group and we're utilizing the Ivoclar uh, mill denture technique. So let's talk about the simplified mill, uh, mill denture workflow. There's two different kinds of workflows for this. I wanna touch, to touch on the more advanced one later on. I don't wanna confuse anybody, but you can, you can use the simplified mill denture workflow as I'm gonna show. The first appointment, we're gonna take, it's gonna take the preliminary impression, and then we're, gonna, we're going to ask for a pillimeter reading, and I'll explain that in a minute. Send it back to the laboratory. We're gonna, um, uh, make a base plate and occlusal rim. And then on the second appointment, you're gonna take a functional impression inside the base plate and a bite registration. We'll design and fabricate the, uh, the uh, printed try-in, send it back to you for that third appointment, but you can check for aesthetic and function, and then send it back to us at the laboratory and then we'll mill that final denture. And for the fourth appointment, we have the insertion of the, uh, of the denture. So I touched on a papilla meter meeting before, Oh, did you want to talk about the polling question? Uh, I'm so sorry, Dennis. Yes. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Um, can we know if you used a digital denture system? So what digital denture systems have you used? The Densply Lucitone, Ivoclair Milled, or Colza, Colzer, sorry, Paladigital. What digital denture systems have you used? And we're at about 50%, so I'll end. Uh, Dennis, actually, uh, most everybody hasn't used 
um, any of the three. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's some other ones out on the market too, but these are the ones that are, you know, the more popular ones. That's why I put it there, but, uh, so that's good. I'm glad I'm giving you the information on these since you've never used them before. So, uh, um, yeah, any other, and we'll take questions at the end of the, uh, at the webinar. So I, I can answer some more for you, but I was touching on the papilla meter, you know, uh, so this papilla meter reading, we just rest this tool on a papilla. And it gives us an indication of where the incisal edge is going to be uh, going to end. So I usually add a couple more millimeters to this. So this particular photo, I would say about 19, 20 millimeters on this particular photo. And then we take that information at the laboratory. It will help contour that bite registration and that occlusal rim for you. So you, it's less work for you in the, in the dental office, uh, you know, uh, contouring these bite rims. So let's talk about the milled CAD uh, design here. So the milled digital venture software, it's a, a Great software, uh, there's great features in the software. It indications of full dentures, single arch dentures, and immediate dentures. And it's utilized in the Avaclar of Evident Tooth Library. Just like we had on the Densply side with the IPN, now we have on, on the, on the uh, MILT side, um, we have the Avaclar uh, Tooth Library with Blue Line, Evident, SDCL, and Panaris Teeth. And as you know, these are excellent, all excellent teeth. We have a full arch setup function. You know, eliminates a lot of time with setups. Everything comes into play in full, full upper and lower arts uh, setup function. Exclusive clinical tools and workflow options, and we'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the seminar. And the oversized milling process, uh, and we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes too. That's going to eliminate a lot of the finishing time. So the Ivoclar Vivident Digital Tooth Library, we're utilizing the uh, Fenaris 2 teeth, the Vivident SCL, uh, SDCL, and the Blue Line teeth. And we have an option. We can either, either uh, Fuse these dentured teeth individually into the milled denture base, or we can have actually mill denture teeth out of a puck. And uh, that's called a Viva Dent CAD. And we'll talk about that in the next few slides. And then we can do full arch setups. So we can either mill these, um, the Viva Dent CAD in quadrants or a full arch setup. And we can bond that into the denture base. And the software allows for complete control to change the shape of the denture teeth. It's important to be able to do this because the ideal occlusal contacts for single arch dentures against natural teeth uh, are important. So I want to show this a little bit on the screen here, see if it works here. Yes, so it's showing here, we're just bringing this tooth into occlusion, this bicuspid into occlusion. We can lengthen these teeth, we can make them a little bit wider. As you can see, we're widening, widening the, the occlusal surface of this one tooth here. And it's a lot of, lot of neat tools in, in the software that we can utilize uh, to, to plan these dentures. And we don't have to do a complete reset when the tooth needs to be removed. The removing molars and premolars is easy as a click of a mouse. In this particular slide, we're going to show uh, the removing, removal of a, a premolar in just one click. There you go. That was an easy setup. So uh, real, real nice features with this, uh, these, uh, the, you know, planning these uh, dentures. And extracting teeth, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the uh, whole program here, you know, with immediate dentures. All we have to do is highlight the tooth, click on it, and the tooth disappears. So instead of doing a model surgery in a laboratory by grinding the stone, we do this virtually. And we'll contour the tissue, remove some bone, and uh, just get everything to where we want to before we start setting the denture teeth. A lot of great tools. And the design for immediate dentures is simplified by utilizing the pre-prep scan and overlay function, allowing the user to set denture teeth using the existing teeth as a guideline. So check this out, this is pretty neat too. Look at this. So we use existing teeth as a guideline and we, we set these denture teeth in a matter of seconds. So a lot of great features with this, uh, this software here. Let's talk about materials here for a minute. So we have the ivory based CAD material. And if you're familiar with the ivory based uh, material, um, uh, it, this is the same material. It's the same type of uh, uh, polymer material. And it's, um, it's a great material, high, re high uh, impact resistance and flexural strength. And then we have the Viva Dent CAD. And the PMMA material comes in various shades also for the pucks. Physical properties are fantastic. We have uh, minimal deformation after milling. The accuracy of fit is phenomenal. You'll see a little video I'm going to show at the end of the pr presentation also. And we have even have some, uh, uh, some doctors telling us that uh, they're not even utilizing the uh, post dam and laboratories are telling us not, not using, utilizing a post dam on the upper anymore because the fit is so accurate. 
but we still, I still like to put a post dam. Even if, it, even if it's a minimal post dam, I still like to utilize that post dam. Hey, Dennis, we have our last polling question. And I'm not, oh, there it goes. Uh, do you feel more comfortable prescribing a milled or printed denture? We are curious if you feel more comfortable prescribing a milled or printed denture, or none of the above. Um, and audience, we don't, don't have any participation. Can you see the poll, Dennis? Uh, I don't see anything now on the screen. No. Huh. Okay, let me try relaunch. There we go. Are you seeing the poll now? Um, I don't see anything, no. Not on my screen. Uh, not sure what the function okay. is doing, so we'll just skip this one tonight. So. Okay, all righty. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's a lot of different, you know, different opinions on the uh, the milled and, and printed dentures. You know, both are very uh, work very well. You know, some doctors like the uh, milled better than than printed. You know, so. But um, getting back to the uh, to tooth shaded discs here, you know, it comes in various shades here, um, and it's a double cross link material, and um, the aesthetics are phenomenal. So I'm going to show two uh, on each uh, two slides here, two sides of the uh, slide here, uh, with uh, denture teeth. One side of these denture teeth, let me split them down the midline here. Uh, one side is uh, actually milled, the other side is your uh, traditional carded teeth. And see if they can tell the difference by looking at this. I, I mean, I can't tell the difference. So on the left hand side is your uh, Viva Dent CAD material, which is the milled material. And on the right side is the actual denture teeth, on a carded denture teeth. So look how nice, I mean, the anatomy is beautiful on, the, on these teeth, really nice. Lower opacity, uh, anatomical shape. We talked about ling uh, lingual anatomy, uh, nice emergence profile on these teeth, uh, both milled and carded. And the surface is design is, is very uh, aesthetic. And let's talk about translucency. There's a new type of uh, uh, puck out now where we can adjust the translucency on these, uh, on these uh, full arch milled, full arch cases. And it's called a Viva Dent Multi-CAD. If you look at the right hand side here, let me see if I can show you by clicking here. Actually, we can adjust the translucency. We can raise the uh, uh, raise it up in the software for um, more translucency, or bring it down for less translucency. So this goes to some great options for for uh, uh, great aesthetics and natural looking aesthetics with these uh, milled type of uh, arches. And just like we bonded our denture teeth into the uh, the printed denture base on the Lucitone side, we also have the um, uh, uh, bonding material called ICAD, and we're going to be uh, bonding in these individual denture teeth into the denture base, or we're going to be bonding that to a full arch or a quadrant arch uh, milled, uh, those milled denture teeth, you know, and the, uh, the ICAD bonding material, it's an auto curing polymerization material, and the chemistry has been changed to make it more fluid and extend the working time to about 10 minutes. This allows the material to penetrate the milled components to polymerize the denture base. Uh, to the denture teeth, creating a monolithic integrity, which means it's fusing those denture teeth to the denture base. The equipment we're using for the milling uh, is the program uh, programmer mill uh, PM7. Very accurate milling. And then on the mill denture workflow, pretty much what we talked earlier, you know, just uh, we, you know, we're scanning and designing, we're, we're putting the information into that um, uh, scan into the software and we're signing and printing, I mean, uh, printing that uh, try-in and then milling the final denture. But we also have something called the oversized milling process. And this is utilized when we, uh, we're milling our denture teeth instead of using individual denture teeth. So we're doing something called the vestibular milling, which takes about 30 minutes. And it's not a full milling of the denture teeth, but uh, so we're milling that, we're doing the oversized milling of the arch. Then we're bonding it to the base using that ICAD bonding material. And what we do after that, after we use the ICAD material, we're actually putting it back into the milling machine for about 90 minutes, and it's called a fine milling. And once, once the fine milling is finished, uh, this denture is all finished and just ready to polish. It comes out of there just looking like a finished denture. So all we have to do is polish the material and, 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 uh, and that's it, it's, it's finished. So it makes it life a lot easier for us on the dental laboratory side, but it's also giving you a nice aesthetic and good fitting denture. about 150 minutes of total milling time. And there's some of the final milled dentures. These are a couple of dentures that I did uh, for milled, milled uh, dentures here. These are with individual denture teeth. 
And now there's, a, there's some, it, probably in May, there's going to be a new material called the iVotion material that Ivoclar is coming out with. It's going to be one disc and one milling uh, and one, one denture. And what, what they did, they combined the tooth part, the tooth aspect of Vivid and CAD and the uh, actually uh, uh, Iva based material. And they're going to have it in one puck. It's going to be calling it iVotion. And uh, that's due to be out in, I think, sometime in May. I saw this at the midwinter meeting, and it was pretty, pretty nice looking material. But it saves a lot of time with uh, looting uh, and bonding denture teeth into the uh, denture base. So these, these photos are not the best photos here. I, I was just giving them, and I, I, I copied them off the uh, email I got uh, regarding this material. But it's going to look like a promising material. You know, it's, uh, it's, they call it a unique shell ge geometry combining both uh, the tooth-shaded tooth shade material and the denture base material. So we're looking forward to getting that, uh, that in, for in uh, pretty much at the uh, end of May. Can we make it better denture? I believe we can. You know, between the communication with the clinical clinician and the denture technician and digital technician, I believe we can. Now, why choose the mill denture over the analog dentures or uh, the accuracy of fit, bacteria resistance, same thing with the uh, uh, printed rate functional occlusion, electronic record, fast turnaround time, and a few fewer manual steps and consistent quality. I like, the, I like this feature also. You always have the uniformity of thickness and thinness. You don't have a palate that's too thick, that's gonna be uncomfortable for the patient. The lingual side of the, of the denture on a lower is gonna be comfortable for the tongue. So we have that uniformity at all times. And the monolithic strength, it's actually eight times stronger than a traditional analog denture when we're using the full, fully milled uh, arch with the uh, denture teeth. That's pretty amazing, eight times stronger. The aesthetics are beautiful, and where do you see, this is Dr. Frank Lacelli trying to take these dentures out of the mouth here. Let's see if I can get these sound up for you. There you go. Now, I don't think there's any sound in here, but you can see he's asking the patient to go into excursions, going side to side to make sure the bite's correct. It's very efficient, takes, takes a lot of time to make sure these dentures uh, are, are functional and they're fitting well. And now he's gonna to try to take these out of the mouth here. When he tries to take the lower out, you can see it's actually suction on a lower denture here. And that's, that's unheard of, you know, with the lower dentures. There we go. And we've got great suction and fit on the upper. This base is going to be able to eat anything. There we go. Great fit and function on these. So really good quality denture when you have on these milled uh, Ivoclar dentures. I'm going to touch a little bit now on the advanced digital denture workflow. We talked about the simplified workflow earlier, which I showed you already. Uh, there are also some great, uh, great tools that uh, Ivoclar offers for the advanced digital venture workflow. So we'll talk about this now. And what we'll do is on the first appointment, we want an anatomical impression. Uh, we take a preliminary impression and a pre-bite pre -bite registration using a centric tray. And you'll see what I'm talking about in, these, uh, in the next coming sl upcoming slides. And with this centric uh, tray, well, it's you're also utilizing something called the UTS CAD. And this is going to give us our uh, occlusal plane and bipupillary line. So you send that information to us at the laboratory, and we can scan it, and we can print a 3D bite plate design. So instead of having that bite, red, bite occlusal rim, we're going to print a, a 3D bite plate design. And then you have the option of using a Gothic arch tracer uh, and taking a bite registration. So second performance, you'll take a functional impression inside that uh, 3D bite plate and you'll take a bite registration. You can either utilize a traditional bite registration method, or you can utilize the uh, intraoral tracing device. So it takes a little getting used to, a little, little bit of a learning curve, but uh, all that information is, you know, is taken from us, and you write it down on an Rx, and we, and we, we enter this into the software. And again, the, the, the next visit is the same as usual. I'm gonna print a try-in, I'm gonna mill the denture for you, and you're gonna insert it on the fourth appointment. So, these are the clinical tools. With the centric tray, pretty much a, a, a tray to, to, to get your preliminary jar relation. You can use a putty material or a polyvinyl material to do this. And the UTS CAD, uh, actually that centric tray attaches to the UTS CAD, so you can define the campus plane, a bipupillary line. This is gonna help you with the cant and the occlusal plane, gonna get that more accurate, that information more accurately. 
And the 3D biplate on a nathometer is an option. You can utilize that in the, uh, in, in the biplate also. And actually, if we print out that, uh, that biplate, the 3D biplate, it actually snaps onto that biplate. So you can get that intraoral tracing uh, record. There's your centric, centric tray, compatible with, with UTS CAD. This reminds me a little bit of like a Facebook transfer. So all this information is like having the patient at the, in the, at the bench with us at the lab. You know, so, uh, and there's your uh, UTS CAD that captures the campus plane and the bipupillary line. And you know that campus plane is like from the tip of the nose to the middle of the ear, and that's your occlusal plane. A lot of great tools here. And there's your 3D biplate. You can also use a regular occlusal web method, you know, with wax, and that's fine also. This is just a more advanced method. There's your nathometer, which has uh, you know, been around for a long time, an intraoral tracing device, which gives us the information. And what we'll do, we'll take all this information that uh, you, you have on these tracing devices, uh, and we'll put, put it into the scanner, and we'll scan that information into the software. And then we'll, you, at the, in the office there, uh, you can give us the information, just write everything, all the information down on the, on the uh, RX, uh, I mean, UTS CAD information, the papillometer, uh, everything is on, on this RX, and we enter this information into the software. Advancement in dental technology, you know, it's great to see where dental technology has taken us. You know, it's, uh, and at Dental Services Group, we're excited to offer you, the clinician, these great options on digital dentures to help you achieve the ultimate goal of patient satisfaction. Thank you, everybody. And uh, now I will take whatever questions you have. We appreciate your time tonight being with us. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, we do have some questions that came along um, during the presentation. And my extreme apologies for the not being muted and interrupting. I was I called Damon for help. Oh, OK. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I, I, I didn't realize it. It's fine. But we do. There's uh, more <clears throat> to it. So um, a uh, someone wanted to know that if they don't have a scanner, but if they send an analog case, that they can scan and do it digitally. So I shared that the short answer is yes, but that you might want to go um, dig a little deeper on this. Yeah, I and mean, you can send, you could, there's, there's a lot of options. If you don't have a scanner, you don't have the, you know, you don't have the tools to do this. You can still get into this. You know, it's, you know, it's, there's, there's also design, scanning design centers. Is this a, a, a clinician that asked the question? Was it a dentist? Yeah, you don't, you don't, um, no, we, we can, I see the name Joel Walters, so I don't okay. know. Okay, yeah. well, if either way, you know, if it, 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 of course, on a clinician side, you send it to us, we'll, we'll scan it. You know, uh, intraoral scanning, like I mentioned before, is not right there yet, but, uh, you know, but we, we, you know, we, there's also design centers that help you design these cases if you don't have a, if you don't have a scanner. <clears throat> and Dennis, it is Dr. Walters. Oh, okay, doctor. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have, you don't have a scanner, that's fine. We can, we can scan that in a laboratory for you, you know, so, and you don't need that into all scanner to do this. You know, we can do everything uh, for you in a laboratory. All you have to do is that simplified uh, workflow approach and uh, we'll scan the, we'll either scan the uh, impression or scan the models and we'll get all that information into the, uh, into the software. But yeah, you don't have to change anything. Yeah, you know, I, I get asked a lot of questions about this. Yeah, because uh, you know a lot of dentists tell, uh, tell me, you know, Dennis, this is uh, this is great for the laboratory. It's a digital venture, digital workflow for the laboratory, but it's totally not. It's not totally digital on the clinician side yet. And you're absolutely correct. You know, it's getting there. I think we're going to see this in about a year. Well, you're going to be able to scan these uh, intraorally, and we're going to cut down the amount of visits for me to two visits or three visits, and I think it's going to be phenomenal. You know, it's an ever evolving uh, technology. And it's exciting where we're going with this. So but, uh, thank you for your question. I appreciate it. Um, Dr. Walters would also like to know um, if there is and what is the cost difference between milled and printed dentures? Yeah, it's about, it's, it's about, about, about $100 difference. Yeah, it's a, uh, the printed denture is a little less money than, than the milled denture because of the material factor and the time factor. Thank you, Dennis. And yep. then um, we do have a question and regarding the customization of teeth and the dentures. Um, someone mentioned that um, they learned a little bit uh, in school on a couple cases, but not enough to, go, enough to get comfortable in asking the lab to customize it. What should they know and what is yeah. available? Right, you're talking about characterizing the teeth on on these cases. Yeah, they, yeah, they, there are. Uh, I think that's what you, you're asking here. Uh, characterizing, customizing teeth, just like we would do uh, on a denture base. 
you know, there are some you know, tools out there from different manufacturers where you can customize teeth. And basically, you know, these teeth are still, uh, um, you know, a, a PMMA material, and you can utilize this a, a system out by, um, uh, I think there's, there's one by Vita, the system where you can uh, characterize teeth. There's a, there's a number of companies out there where you can utilize this. But yes, you can still characterize teeth. I don't see it that often, because let me tell you, the, the teeth that are out there now are so aesthetic, and there's so many different uh, functional shades and, uh, out there. So, uh, you know, denture teeth now have come a long way, you know, so... I used to do it once in a while in my laboratory, but uh, you know the aesthetics on these denture teeth now, it's really not necessary unless you want some sort of staining on there or uh, you know, I internal um, uh, characterization on there. But uh, you can still do it, but uh, you know, it, it, it takes a little while. But you know, if, if you're talking about the other aspect of it going uh, as far as uh, full denture going against a single arch and adjusting those teeth, that's done in the software. And that's only for if you're printing or milling denture teeth. You, know, you can't do that with uh, your carded teeth. Because they're already they're already prefabricated, yeah. So, uh, but the, it is it's, it is achievable. Great, thank you. And then we also have a question: What material is used for milled teeth? And then they have in parentheses PMMA. Yes, yeah, it's a PMMA material. I'm going to go back a little bit. I'll show you what we have here. Let's go back. See if I can go. Oops. I want to see if I can go back to that one slide where we show the material. It's a PMMA material. It's called a Vivided CAD material. And it's actually the same material. That's why I'm trying to get back to this material. It's the same material that you have your Phanaris teeth, and it's also this, you know, your blue line teeth. So it's the same, the same material, only it's milled. Let's see what we got here. Get back there. I'd probably pass there it is. So there's your materials, Vivid and CAD, and hopefully, yeah, here we go. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a great material, and it's like I said, it's the same material you see on the carded teeth here. That's why the aesthetics are so great, you know. So the material you don't have to worry about an inferior material that's going to wear faster or chip or uh, not be functional. You know, it's it's a it's a nice functional material. Thank you. Um, um, we have... that oh, uh, did that answer your question, Dimitri? I think so. I don't see anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it's poly polymethyl metharcholate material. Yes. Yeah, so it's the same as uh, any other denture teeth, but these denture teeth are so aesthetic and characterized already. Uh, even with the milling side now with the, uh, uh, with the new translucent pucks, you can address the translucency. And um, you've talked about wider occlusal, occlusal surfaces with uh, uh, tooth morphology that matches natural tooth morphology. You know, so there's nothing inferior about these teeth at all. I mean, just they're, they're great functional teeth. Great, thank you. Do we have any further questions for Dennis? And while we're waiting a little bit, um, Dennis is making himself available to everybody. You can email him at durban, U-R-B-A-N, at dentalservices.net. More than happy to take any questions, comments, thoughts, um, or inquiries. Yep. Um, Anything you want at all, I'll try to answer for you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, and. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think you're going to be happy with these new materials that are out on the market and it's constantly changing. You know, next year, I think we're going to see probably more improvements on these materials too. But right now, I mean, they're, they're really at a good stage too with these, uh, these, these printed and milled materials. We got a great course. Thank you in the comments. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I have a passion for this. I've been doing this over 40 years, so it's like, uh, I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited about this technology. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, different materials out on the market over the years, and I've had the chance to travel the world lecturing on removable technology. And I've, I've seen a lot. And, uh, you know, for me to talk about this and feel comfortable, uh, I'm excited. You know, so this, is, this is good stuff. So uh, I think we're heading in a great direction on a removable. And not only on full dentures. I mean, all I spoke about tonight was full dentures. Where do you see what's happening with the implant dentures and over dentures and attachment cases and things like that? That's another exciting aspect we'll be talking about uh, at Dental Services Group in the future, you know, and uh, we have it, a lot of this technology now already. So stay tuned for uh, upcoming webinars where we can hopefully uh, uh, get your uh, attention and, and, and get a learning experience for you. We are working and constantly posting up at dentalservices.net backslash edu. 
So stay tuned. New webinars are coming through um, by the day right now. And <laughs> we get to update about every two days <laughs> as soon as we get everything posted in public. Yep. Great. And we do have a question in the chat box about, um, can we see the video get posted? Yes, you can. Um, however, we have not solidified that platform as yet. So if you can give us a couple more days, um, we will be publishing. It will link through our site, most likely via YouTube uh, for rewatching. But uh, stay tuned. We haven't completely verified the accessibility. Um, Dennis, I, oh, we got another Q&A, so. Okay. Uh, oh, great, thank you. You did answer Dimitri's question. A great oh, good. Presentation. Perfect. Um, so thank you everybody for attending. Dennis, thank you so much. And You're oh, welcome. Your final <laughs> note is so lovely and positive. I <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jessica, for your help also. Jessica is great with uh, helping me plan these things. And, uh, you know, and thanks again to everybody who, who participated tonight in this webinar. Please stay safe and hope to see you again soon.